Have you heard of the Arduino and are wondering what it is? We use the Arduino a lot in our projects at Make. Due to its popularity and ease of use, it's one of our favorite microcontrollers. If you're not even sure what a microcontroller is, this video has you covered. A microcontroller is a circuit board that has a chip on it that can be programmed to do many different things. You can read information from sensors. For instance, if you want the board to read how bright it is in a room, you can use this photoresistor which is sensitive to light. Or you could detect when someone walks into a room with this motion sensor. Even this GPS receiver is a sensor. It tells your project where on the globe it is. Now, that's just a small sample of the different kinds of input that sensors provide, but what can you do with that data? Using output, you can control devices or display and store data. For instance, you can have your Arduino simply blink an LED like this. This LCD readout will let your Arduino display text information. And you can also have sensor values go right into your computer for storing or processing. We're just scratching the surface of the different inputs and outputs that we can use with the Arduino. There's just way too much out there to cover in a single video. But let's take a look at how an Arduino can play a role in a basic project. Let's say you want your living room lights to turn off when you press play on your DVR or DVD player's remote so that you can enjoy your movie in the dark automatically. To make this happen, we'll need a sensor that can read the light that comes out of the remote control. It looks like this, and it's called an infrared sensor. And how do we turn off the lights? We use the power switch tail I mentioned before. It plugs into your wall, and you plug your lamp into it. This wire is what we'll use to control the power switch inside. So how do these work together? Well, that's where the Arduino comes in. We'll hook both of them up to the Arduino pins and write some code to upload to the board using free software. In a very basic overview, the code that we upload to the Arduino will be checking to see if the sensor has received any pulses of infrared light from the remote. If the pattern of flashes matches the pattern of flashes we know to be for play, the Arduino will send the signal to the power switch tail to cut the power to the lamps. We could then enhance this project so that when we hit stop or pause, the lights turn back on. It's just a matter of updating the code and uploading it to the board. You can reprogram these boards over and over again. There's so much you can do with the Arduino, it's kind of incredible. I used infrared for my Enough Already project, which listened to the closed captioning track from the TV and would mute the TV whenever someone was mentioned that I didn't want to hear about. Here are a few other ideas of cool things you can do with the Arduino. Randy Serafan created the lunchtime clock, which speeds up slightly right before noon, slows down between 12 and 1, and then speeds up again, giving you 12 extra minutes of lunch every day. Steve Hofer's Secret Knock Gumball Machine was featured in Make Volume 25. It's a lot like a regular gumball machine, except that instead of a quarter, you need to know the secret knock to get a gumball out. The Arduino also lets you take your projects online. Even your cat can start tweeting with the Kitty Tweety project from Mark DeVink. When your cat plays with a little toy, the device tweets. The project can be found in Make Volume 22. And who doesn't love a robot? Arduino can help you make your own. It acts like the brains of your bot. But what if you want to use your brain to control the bot? Check out this mind-controlled Arduino robot from Taro and Kimo Carvin. So that's just a small sample of what you can do with an Arduino. My best advice to you is to jump right in and start playing around. Everything you need to start exploring the possibilities.